So the extension we're going to talk about today is one of my favorites, and it's called filament shoal analysis. Now it does a lot more than just shoal analysis, and it is a work in progress, and it has a lot of different features associated with this particular extension. If you go to my GitHub page, you can see it there listed. It's a shoal analysis version, I think 22 I'm on, so this is a different, definitely has been something I've been adding to, modifying, improving uh, over the last several years uh, when I started creating creating this in the Python code. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that I've added to it, I've improved over the years. This is a current, most stable version that I've had that can do a lot of the stuff uh, that is listed within the menu items that we're gonna go over today. Now I'm gonna go over these one at a time so as not to overwhelm uh, the processing of the, the extension and to kind of just focus on if you do this one, this gets created. If you do this one, that this thing gets created uh, and give you an idea of what the different features are that the extension can do. And I want to try to keep it as short as possible. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about the different I, uh, um, topics here. But again, I want to present these tools a as a way to introduce you to some kind of interesting statistics that could be generated. And then if you do watch these videos and you're like, hey, that's pretty good, but maybe this is a better way of doing it. Maybe this is, you can add this particular decision. Please make some comments into the YouTube channel. Give me ideas. You can comment either on the YouTube channel. You could probably even comment on the GitHub page if you wish to do that as well. Um, and we're going to kind of go over some of these features and what some of the statistics that I generated to kind of create some additional analysis inside uh, the Mars application. So as you can see here, I have a retinal ganglia cell uh, uh, loaded up here that has already been fully traced it vetted I went through and traced this one manually inside the software and got a really good uh, demonstration of the ganglion cell here you have the cell body you have all the primary dendrites right now they're color coded based on primary branch depth uh, and you can see it looks pretty nice you have all these branches uh, coming out in the process the raw data just to give you an idea looks something a little bit like that um, so anyway, I'm not going to be looking at that. We're going to be really focusing on the dendrite itself, the processes from the, the filament trace itself. So we're going to start by launching the extension. Um, so the way I typically write my extensions is I'll, I build it into the little gear tab button within the MRS program. Uh, they can also be found usually up here in the image processing tab uh, as well, but I put it here into the gear tab as well. So if you click on this little gear tab, when you're in the retinal gang cell option, you'll see a whole bunch of uh, extensions. Some of these are built in, some of them are my custom extensions. Again, we're going to focus on the Shoal Analysis 22, which is the one that we're going to talk about today. So first thing we're going to do to launch it, you're going to just click on this tab and it's going to go ahead and launch it. You'll see a little uh, command prompt window open up inside your program on your window. Um, keep that open. That means the Python extension is running. Uh, you don't need to do it. If an error message pop ups, it might pop in there and disappear. Um, but in general, you want to keep this window open. It's always going to be open. But what the meat of the extension is, is a, a menu that pops up like this. Now this is a pretty busy menu. It gives you a lot of information about what the extension does, some of the statistics that it may calculate. Uh, again, most of the things in this extension work. Some of them I'm still kind of uh, tweaking and, and trying to get them to be a little bit more reliable in terms of their processing. For example, this uh, dendrite complexity index, I don't think I have that calculated right. But everything else, I believe, is working pretty well here. So the core part of this extension, the, 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 the thing that built this extension right from the get-go is just purely a shoal analysis. Now, inside of Amaris, we already do kind of a shoal analysis within the program. However, we just report the number of intersections. We don't do anything other than kind of displaying the number of those intersections. Um, so what I found, and when I would do the analysis myself when I was uh, doing uh, morphology uh, research uh, back in the day, is that uh, it'd be really nice to be able to see exactly where those intersections are within the data set and maybe plot them and maybe get some other statistics relative to those particular intersections within the data set. So that was the first thing that I wanted to do. And that's the first thing I'm going to talk about here. And we're just going to do a pure, just show analysis. And we're not going to do any of these other features at this time. So at the very top of the screen here, you're going to see the Shoal Sphere radius uh, and the intervals for the Shoal Spheres that are going to be going. Now, it can be done in 2D. It can be done in 3D. This is a sphere within a day. If it's 2D, it will be a circle. If it is 3D, it will be a sphere. So if you have a nice big 3D data set, these Shoal intersections will be on that 3D sphere. So we're going to set an interval of, let's just say, to make it because uh, it's a pretty big ganglion cell here, uh, we're going to set this to 20 microns. So every 20 microns, it's going to create a sphere, and it's going to measure and quantify the intersections within our data set. And so again, we're just going to do that. That's it. 
We're not going to check any of these other boxes. We're just going to do uh, 20 do 20 micron uh, Scholl sphere. We're going to click processed dendrite analysis. So it's going to go ahead and process here. You might see a progress bar. If you have multiple images, um, it will process all the images. Uh, all the all the all the filaments if you have multiple filaments it will process all of those filaments uh, together here uh, so it's gonna go here it's gonna run uh, run the process here it takes a few seconds to launch and there it's done right and so now you can see if you zoom in a little bit here you can kind of see little spots within your data set those are your shoal intersections so I'm gonna visualize this a little bit differently so we can see those intersections a little bit better so I'm gonna switch this to a line mode and I'm just gonna make it white so that we can see I'm gonna turn off the base color here and so we can see those intersections so now what happened here when you run this extension and you run just the shoal sphere uh, calculations it's going to create a new spots object so you can see this shoal uh, uh, spot objects that's created now again I only have one filament here but you can see the filament ID is identified here if we had two filaments or three filaments or four filaments you would have a separate spots object for each one so this is shoal filament number one, and then you'd have for filament number two and three and four, you'd have them in there. And maybe later, if I have time, I'll add um, a visualization of what that looks like for multiple filaments. But that's how it would look here. But so we're going to focus on this one guy for now. So now if we zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see the shoal intersections. So again, every 20 microns, these red spots are 20, the green spots are 40, the purple spots are 60, and so forth and so on, right? And so if you want to look at the quantification of how many shoal spheres are in each one of these, um, how many shoal intersections are each one of these spheres, we're gonna, what I ended up doing is creating a, fill, a, um, a label object here. So if you click on the little label tab here, you'll see that there'll be a shoal intersections label. This automatically gets generated. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. And you can see the class is identified by the size and then the count of the number of intersections per shoal sphere. So you have 15, 21, 30, 34, 40, 40, and so forth down the line. Now we are analyzing this every 20 microns. So we're only seeing the classes and the, the, the numbers for every 20 microns. If you wanted to do it every 10 microns, you can do that. Uh, you can go as low as one micron within the software, within this program, I believe. Um, so you can go as, as small as you want or as big as you want, depending on the type of data uh, that you're tracing. And so this is a really great way to visualize the data set. And you have all these shoal intersections within this label structure. Now, how can you get this data out? How can you visualize the data? How can you export that data out? Uh, it's really pretty, pretty simple here. You're going to go over to the uh, statistics tab for the spot object. And if you go to the overall tab, you're going to see number of label spots per class and you'll see 20 40 60 80 so you can go over here and you can hit the save and you can export this as a csv file and export it out to um, an excel document and then you can export and you'll see all the different days and you can make your particular graphs however you want to make the graphs for your shoal analysis for this particular type of ganglion cell now, there are a bunch of other things that popped up in this overall statistics that we calculate that are kind of interesting to point out. Uh, the two statistics that we generate relative to the shoal intersections um, in the shoal analysis is the critical radius. Critical radius is that radius where the number of intersections is maximum. So we have two values here. Now, I, I made these two values mainly because I thought maybe it'd be interesting to kind of see if they're the same and, and identify exactly where the peak of the shoal intersections are within the data set. So the shoal, critical shoal radius here, the, the one without the high res, identifies based on the 20 micron intervals we had, this is the interval where it has the highest value. So at 100 microns from the soma, from the center of the soma, that has the highest number of intersections. And if you come down here and look at it, uh, number 100 has 40. Now, 120 has 40 as well, but it's gonna take the first one that it gets as 100. However, if you look at the data and you say, well, it's only looking at every 20 microns. What happens in between, between the 20 microns and the 40 microns? Um, so as part of the process, when it's calculating these processes, it also looks at every single micron and it calculates the number of intersections at every single individual uh, micron interval. And so the shoal critical radius high res basically identifies the based on the one micron interval, uh, what is the actual highest interval within the data set. Uh, and in this case, it's 103.
right? 103 microns from the soma. That is the highest number of intervals. And what are the what is the highest number of uh, intersections at that particular interval? It's 43. So we also determine the shoal max as well as not only the, the actual distance, but we also actually show the shoal max. So those are the primary results from the data set. The biggest thing is we have this spots object. So this spots object is now a physical object in the scene. So in this physical object in the scene, you have a bunch of uh, uh, ways to do any kind of analysis you want. These are just, you know, we have the position, we have the, the location. There's a lot of different things you can think about uh, doing an analysis based on the actual location of the shoal intersections. And you can think about, you know, other types of analysis you can do based on knowing the position of all the intersections, the the location of the of those uh, intersections and you know which shoal sphere they're part of. Uh, so you can think about it. if you have any ideas, anything you can uh, add to to being uh, you know other statistics that might be interesting uh, to quantify the dendritic arborization here based on these shoal intersections. Please let me know and and we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can add some stuff moving forward in the future. Now. There is one thing that I did calculate here that is part of this shoal intersections. And again, it's one of these things where I used to do this in the past, but I never really went into high depth to try to figure out all the fancy statistics to doing shoal analysis. I looked online. There's a lot of papers out there that talk about a lot of different types of analysis, dendritic analysis is out there. And eventually maybe I'll go back and I'll review some of them, show, try to try to replicate some of those uh, statistics that they do. But one of the statistics that I, again, just thought would be kind of interesting to, to calculate uh, based on the shoal intersections. And if I go to my detailed statistics and I come here to specific values, I generate some additional custom statistics as part of this extension, as part of this particular part of the extension. Uh, and one is distance to starting point. So as you all know, shoal analysis just measures kind of as the crow flies from the center of the cell outward, uh, these kind of concentric rings that uh, define the structure of of uh, the structure of the, the the intersections based on you know those concentric rings. However, these intersections are actually falling on a specific dendrite on a particular segment of the dendrite, a particular place along the path of that dendrite. So for, for a lot of, of uh, morphological measurements and other types of functional assays to kind of identify you know, how far these points are, where they are within the data set, how they refer to their distance to the soma, how far away are they from the soma in, in reality, not just as the crow flies, but also along the path. So I calculate in the distance to the starting point, the actual distance along the path. So if I take this, I'm going to just reorder this from smallest to largest. You can see here that most of the case, the ones that are kind of the, the, the ones that are circling around here closer are the distance to the soma. So this one here, you see it selected right there. This guy is 23.3879 microns from that point to the soma, to the starting point. This one here, 24, 24.7. 26.0 and so forth and so on. And so you have that actual distance to the soma. And as part of that distance, I was like, oh, it might be interesting to do. And again, I don't know the context here, how important it may be, if it, how we can kind of incorporate this into kind of a real kind of morphometric analysis of the shoal intersections. But I also calculated the ratio, ratio distance, shoal distance to distance to the starting point. Essentially, this custom statistic, this ratio is basically taking the shoal distance and dividing it by the distance of that shoal intersection on that dendrite, on that segment, on its path all the way back to the soma along the dendritic pathway. As this number gets closer to zero, or the closer it is to zero, which means the more straight of a shot it is, to that particular shoal intersection. So there's not a whole lot of branching. It's not going through a lot of curvy or waviness and things like that. It is it is closer to the actual distance of the shoal intersection. So it'll be a little bit closer to one. In this case, for example, this one I have selected is about 0.82. However, some of the spots, especially in this particular example, in this 20 micron sphere of shoal intersections have a much smaller ratio distance, which basically means that it is not a straight shot back to the soma. It kind of looks like it might be for some of these guys, but a lot of these guys, for example, if I select this guy right here, this guy is also in that 20 micron shoal sphere um, bin. However, its distance from that point back to the soma is not 
20 microns. It is much, much larger than 20 microns. And in fact, if you look at this particular guy, uh, specifically in some of these guys along this path, if I just kind of rotate the data just slightly, you can kind of see that this branch here kind of comes under and it branches and it, it takes a much more meandering path back to the soma. And again, this is based on the tracing that we did uh, way, way back in the beginning to get the filament trace correctly uh, identified. But these guys have a much bigger ratio. So it's much further away from the soma itself along the path of the dendrite. And I thought this would be a really interesting way uh, to be able to kind of uh, quantify the shoal intersections in a unique uh, kind of way. And I thought this was very useful. I think this could be a really useful way to, to quantify um, how these kind of relate to the actual shoal intersections. So I think this is a really interesting way of measuring this. And again, I've, I've seen a, a bunch of other different ways to measure this particular type of statistic. One of them is, I think, root angle uh, that I'm kind of thinking about, looking, reading some papers about, seeing if I want to kind of include kind of a root angle measurement as part of this shoal uh, analysis. But this is one uh, particular t set of statistics that I've, I like to generate. Now, I did one more thing here. I created a couple other statistics here uh, on these shoal spots here to kind of generate a really rough idea of the shoal graph. Shoal graphs typically are histograms. Um, they're generally identified uh, by a, a count of the number per number intersections per shoal sphere. Um, now we don't generate histograms in MRS. Uh, you can send out this data and you can calculate one in Excel and you'll be happy to do that. However, if you want to do it in Amaris, uh, we can do it sort of based on these two parameters here, this uh, shoal sphere distance and the number of intersections. So if you go into Vantage up here, if you have the Vantage license, uh, we're going to come in here, we're going to do a uh, 2D plot. to come in here we got a lot of stuff turned on here uh, but you have all these shoal intersections turned on I'm going to turn off all these other things here we don't need them so I'm going to just going to look at this guy here number of shoal intersections as the y I'm uh, sorry number of shoal intersections as the y and we're going to do the shoal sphere in the x and as you can see I'm going to color code this a little bit so we can see it a little bit better you can see um, the number of shoal intersections, and you get this histogram uh, display of the data set, number of shoal intersections, you get the peak, and then a drop off. It's a very traditional shoal graph. Now again, visually, that's kind of the, the limits of what you can do inside of Remoris. Uh, ideally, you probably send this out to Excel and create a real uh, histogram graph that can demonstrate these, these plots a little bit better. But uh, you can get an idea of the path here using this vantage plot. So that's pretty much it. Uh, for kind of just the shoal analysis part of that extension. Again, there's a lot of other features there that some are, are still kind of works in progress. Um, and so I would just keep an eye out for any new features that have come in there. Um, again, right now it's on version 22, uh, but this is the shoal uh, analysis part of the extension. So I wanted to thank you for watching the tutorial on the shoal analysis extension that's located on my Python GitHub page. Uh, this is part one of a series of videos covering this particular extension. There will be additional videos covering some of the other features of the extension. I hope you enjoy them. This is the Mars Guy. Thank you.